At one point or another, I'm sure that you've scrolled past an article, seen a tweet, or had the conversation about the fact that the bunt is being used less and less in today's game. Whether you agree with that movement or not, there are some statistics to back each side up. In today's video, we will cover the run expectancy matrix as it relates to bunting, and answer the question of the era. Should you ever bunt? Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. So, in order to understand why you should bunt or not, we need to start by getting you introduced to the run expectancy matrix. And to clarify, for our current examples, we will only be referring to this sacrifice bunt in which a player gives themselves up in order to move one or more runners up one base. We will get into why in a minute, but it has something to do with our run expectancy matrix. As I mentioned in the introduction, the use of the bunt in general has been steadily declining for almost 50 years. But why? Enter our run expectancy matrix. This chart gives you the total number of runs you are expected to score based off of your current combination of both outs and runners on base, compared to every game that has happened in the past. This may change slightly from year to year, but in the long run this chart will always tell the same story. The column on the far left indicates which bases are occupied by runners, by showing the number of the bag each player would be stationed on during a game. For example, the first one is a runner on first with no players on second or third base. Now as the chart gets filled out, you will see that our run expectancy for each situation varies significantly based on each situation, but I think we can all agree that you would much rather be in a situation to score 2.2 runs than .095 runs. However, that doesn't explain why this chart is really useful. To understand that, let's take a look at a few examples. How can this chart be applied in-game, and what does it have to do with bunting? To answer both of those questions, let's take a look at a few examples starting with a runner on first base with no outs. You'll find this situation on our chart right here, with an average of .831 runs scored from this situation. This however does not say that 83% of the time a runner will score, it is merely giving us the amount of runs that are typically scored during an inning in which this situation occurs. Those odds, of course, will always be changed by what the next hitter does. In this box, I will then give you the chance that a single run will be scored based on each of these positions. For this specific scenario, you will see that there is a 41.6% chance that a single run will be scored when you have a runner on first base with no outs. Now let's take a look at the bunt. If the next batter were to come up and lay down a perfect sacrifice bunt, in which he advances our original base runner, but he gets himself out in the process you will see that on our run expectancy chart, your situation has changed. Instead of scoring .831 runs with a runner on first and no outs, we've actually now put ourselves into a worse situation by having a runner on second base with one out. We can read this as a .644 run in this situation. Not only that, but taking a look at our chances of scoring a run in general, our odds have dropped to 39.7%, which in both cases is worse than before. But is this always the case? Let's take a look at another example where the runner begins now on second base with no outs instead of first. The first thing that you will notice is our run expectancy goes up from 0.8 to 1.0, meaning we are more likely to score more runs if we are put in this situation than our last one, which makes logical sense. Our chances of scoring a run is also up to 61.4%, You'll notice a trend here that the best case scenarios, looking at any of these charts and probabilities, are that you're more likely to score more runs with more people on base, preferably in scoring position, with the least amount of outs. That makes total sense and isn't earth shattering at all, but I just wanted to reiterate how simple these charts are to read. Back to our example, what if in this situation we decided to bunt over our runner from second to third, giving ourselves up in that process? Well. Like before, we will see a drop in our run expectancy. The more outs, the less likely we are to score in general. However, when we hop over to our chances of scoring a run, we have actually increased that percentage by 5%. And that's important, and one of the reasons the bunt is still used in today's game in very specific situations. If you are in a close game, that one run may mean something more than if you are starting out a game on a clean slate. 
you're more likely to do more damage if you stay away from bunting in the latter, but the former could end up winning you a game. And that is what this chart is so useful for. When paired with the probability of scoring a run, we can now make the best possible informed decisions on the actions that should be taken on the field. And that is the answer to our question we posed at the beginning of the video. By the way, all of these charts can be found in the articles I've linked in the description down below. So if you're interested in learning more about all of this stuff, head there after wrapping up this video. If bunts don't work in terms of run expectancy though, why do we still see them in the game today? Like I said, because they do work in very specific situations. This of course doesn't even include other factors that may come into play, like bunting for a hit against the shift, or when a pitcher is in the box and a bunt may be actually more beneficial for the team than him attempting to put the bat on the ball. Now as I said in the beginning of the video, we've been focusing on sack bunts, but what about bunting for a hit? In an article I found looking into this same idea, there were a total of 109 base hit bunt attempts from 2014 through 2017. Of that, 38 of those attempts turned into hits, marking a 348 batting average, meaning when guys who can bunt for a hit do, they're pretty successful at it. But you must also note that just over 100 attempts over the course of 4 years is not a significant amount of tries. Furthering the point, since 2016 we have not seen more than 20 true base hit bunt attempts in an entire season. This is important to note, because not only is the sacrifice bunt not being used frequently in the majors, but base hit and bunting is becoming more rare as well. This could be for a whole bunch of reasons, such as the typical bunt attempt should happen earlier in counts, which goes against the theory of seeing more pitches to hit and taking walks more frequently, the increased number of home runs on average by a big leaguer, and that defenses are more athletic than ever. All of this leads up to the fact that the bunt is being used far less than before. To wrap up everything we've talked about today, we have tons and tons of data that tells us why a bunt doesn't often provide us with a beneficial outcome that we thought it did when it was first introduced to the game, but that also doesn't mean it can't be used in some very specific situations. This is also only applying data at the big league level. If we're talking about youth athletes, you should absolutely continue to bunt. It puts pressure on the defense to make a play, and the guys in the field there probably aren't the best in the world at their position. So. It's definitely worth it. The same string of thought holds true for college baseball. Teams bunt much more often in college baseball compared to professional baseball, and the damage done by the typical college hitter isn't anywhere close to what a big leaguer can do. And the same goes for putting the ball in play to force a defense to make a play. At the time being, there's a place for it. But as we've shown in this video time and time again, the era of the bunt, especially the sacrifice bunt, has began to come to an end in professional baseball. The bunt in general has been used less and less over the course of the past century, and that's the product of more people questioning what has always been done, and relying on the quantification of how certain plays can affect the outcome of entire games. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations, or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.